Welcome and thanks for joining us at WYCC.org for In the Loop, the After Show. Our guests, Jim Karras, lifestyle expert and author, journalist and author, Monroe Anderson, and poet, author, and artistic director of Young Chicago Authors, Kevin Koval. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for Good having to be here. So let's talk about sex. Now that I've got your attention, sex education. Uh, there's a proposal to revamp sex education in the city of Chicago. Uh, for years, schools have had an option to teach an abstinence-based curriculum or no sex education at all. Uh, the proposal that would be new would allow schools that teach sex education to talk about birth control and sexually transmitted diseases. But of course, this is uh, running into some interference. Jim, your thoughts on this? Well, I have a 16-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. And interestingly enough, you have to educate the children. You have to let them know what is going on. But I want to bring up an interesting point. Just like my business is weight loss and fitness, the people you hang with determines your weight more than anything else. What really needs to come across is there's the fast kids at school. Don't we all remember the fast kids? Oh, I wasn't. I was a nerd. Yeah. Um, and I mean, then there was the slow kids. I mean, it's really about keeping your eyes open as a parent, seeing what's going on, but you've got to give kids information. They need it. They want it. It's all over the internet, and they're getting it. Let's make sure they get the right information. And, and, and if they don't get it in school, they get it off the streets mm -hmm. from, from um, kids that don't know as much as they think they do, and so they get bad information. Now, the sex education starts at sixth grade in the city of Chicago. I mean, do you think, Kevin, that may be a little late? Yeah. I think it is probably late. I think kids are sexualized in our culture from very young. And I think if we don't provide them the resources to determine how they deal with their bodies and their bodies in relation to other people, inevitably we're doing them great harm. That could even lead to, you know, the detriment of their life. And so I think we need to provide information in a responsible way. And I think the reason why we don't has nothing to do with the safety of the child. I think it has to, everything to do with the puritanical nature of religion. And I think that that's a problem. And I think there's supposed to be a separation of church and state. And so we should really arm young people with what it is they're dealing with on a regular basis, as opposed to imagine that they're not. Well, this new bill, if it's approved uh, in, in Springfield, would still give schools the option of not teaching anything. Right now, Ab schools that teach abstinence don't have to teach sex education, but even if this is passed, the school could say, look, we're just going to ignore well, this should, subject. And that's going to come with the parents handle yeah. Yeah. And, and they should do it younger. When, when I was nine years old, my 11-year-old cousin told me about the facts of life. Was it right or wrong? Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> mainly it's about condom. But, <laughs> but, you know, this is the 50s we're talking right. about. So, and now, we, you know, much later, and for us to pretend like children... Um, don't know or aren't interested in sex is nuts. Right? Especially with the internet, yes. movies. It's on every television show, too. Right. I mean, every 7 p.m. Com television show, not the stuff at 11 o'clock at night. The early yeah. things, it's all right there. But right. the argument from the, the, those who support teaching abstinence only is that they say that it's character building, that it sends the message that you are worth waiting for. But there have been studies that say that teaching abstinence does not work. I mean, kids just pretend that they're going along with it while they really are um, victims of their own interests. And a quarter of all women are sexually assaulted. I mean, that has nothing to do with waiting. That has to do with, you know, we don't deal with culture well. We don't deal with sex well as a culture. And so we need to educate both our young men and our young women about how to interact with one another. And Kevin, that's a shocking statistic because you don't hear it that high because most therapists or people involved in it say the unreported mm. amount of abuse is enormous. So why not let children learn? If someone is doing this to you, right. you, you now are smart enough, you've been educated to say, no, don't do that, no, don't touch me, or just run. Do you know what I'm saying? Whatever you have to do to and not allow that to happen. And there's a public conversation that right. allows you to say something that's happened Couldn't as opposed to keep it in you know, these closets. I mean, we, we, need to, we need to have this public discourse as opposed to keep kids uh, contained. Mm -hmm. you know? And if you don't teach sex education, I assume you're not teaching about sexually transmitted diseases. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Absolutely correct. I mean, again, being a parent, there are things we've already inoculated my children with, knowing that the risk of this, you know, in discussing it, it's really an anti-cancer drug almost when you think about what mm. you're doing with the different types of viruses that they can get. And therefore, why not make your child protected, make your child strong and prepared for this, rather than kind of say, well, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Maybe it will is high enough for me to take action. On that note, we have to wrap things up. Jim Karras, thank you so much. Monroe Anderson, Kevin Koval, we appreciate your time. Until next week, good night.